Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Outside the Box. I'm your host, Onay the CEO, and tonight I have a purpose-driven episode for you. So I want you guys to stay tuned in because now you're plugged in, tuned in, tapped in to Outside the Box. guys we're back and without further ado i want to introduce my next guest she's a mother she's an author she's an entrepreneur and she's a philanthropist i want you guys to give it up for michelle lynette hi hey girl hello it is so good to have you (laughs) thank you for having me oh thank you for coming (laughs) so now that i finally have you at the round table (laughs) i want you i know what you do but i want you to tell our viewers and our listeners what all you do and why so many people will be moved by your story okay well first of all i am the michelle lynette and um i met miss one 12 years ago on the poetry scene Um, and it became a great experience and I was very um, inspired by you. Really? You and Seven. Thank you. (laughs) I'm humble about it. Okay. And there are times where I can be quite shy but um, I remember you talking to me and telling me, hey, why don't you go up there and say something? And, you know, I went up there, I started, and from there, it just kind of went. But Wow, uh, this is my first time here. <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> really? Yeah. You never yeah. know what you, okay, shout out. Because I used to come out yeah, just you to hear out, you poetry, were so quiet, just to hear it. Yeah, yeah, just to hear it. And it was you and Seven. Um, that I was moved by the most. Thank you. Uh, followed by a few others, mm-hmm. Bar None. Shout out to Bar None. Yeah, <laughs> Barnese for sure. <laughs> um, but outside of that, um, I am also a rising businesswoman. Mm-hmm. I have... Um, Oh, I'm so nervous. That's okay, girl. <laughs> it's so just nervous. you and me in this room. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as I was saying, I have um, a poetry book that I re-released. Mm-hmm. I released it 12 years ago. Okay. And um, over the course of time, uh, life happened. Mm-hmm. Became a wife, a mother again. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of dedicated myself to my family life. Mm-hmm. And over a period of time I kind of tapped into acting and I did my first stage play with AWJ Productions shout out to Miss Annie Johnson okay and um, I was finding myself um, really having a love for the arts again mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's when I slowly started back moving into it and so um, I started with the plays first Mm-hmm. And then I went back to my poems, okay. and I knew eventually at some point that I would do it again, right. and I did. Um, so eight years later, I went to D.C. to visit uh, my sister friend, and she told me, she said, um, hey, you're going to have to speak. And I said, uh, I don't want to speak. I just want to come here and support you and have a good time. She said, you cannot come to D.C. and not be a poet. You're going to speak tonight. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, my gosh. So we were in uh, Manassas, Virginia, and uh, we were at silent treatment. Um, It it, it was um, SNL. Mm -hmm. And um, Jeff Johnson, Kaniki Jakarta, they pulled me to the stage. And that's when I really got into focusing on my poetry again focusing okay yeah yeah I got into focusing on it again um so from there I just slowly started moving to creating new pieces Mm -hmm. and I knew at that point I'm gonna do this again and I did and so you re-released it I did and so but you actually have a few businesses can you tell me about your unique concierge? concierge okay 
So Your Unique Concierge is actually a concierge service that I started a few years ago just for the everyday person. Mm -hmm. And although it got nice buzz, um, I saw that I was attracting more of the, um, how can I say this? Um, Elitist group? Yes, I was. I was. And so um, I saw that that was the direction that I was likely going to move into. Mm -hmm. And so from there, I did. Uh, When the Super Bowl came here a few years ago, um, I worked with Antonio Brown. And that was a very nice experience. And uh, from there, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to stick right here. Mm -hmm. And so basically I cater to the athletes and entertainers um, who need assistance when they come to Houston. Mm -hmm. And I also decided to work with brides for like a day of wedding coordinator if they need somebody to coordinate their day for them. So that's what your unique concierge is for. Okay. And so you you still available for booking for services like that when the celebrities and everyone coming to town, they can still look up your unique concierge. That's absolutely correct. (laughs) That's correct. But you actually have another branch, which is your unique mothers. Can you tell me a little bit about that? That's my baby. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So your unique mothers is specifically for pregnant women and I got the idea from doing something for my best friend so as you notice when baby showers come around the mother never gets anything it's always for the baby Baby. right Mm -hmm. and so I decided to get something for my best friend and she had gone into labor unexpectedly and she didn't have what she needed so I went and bought up a lot of things specifically for her Mm -hmm. and so from there she said to me several days later she said I like what you did for me it was really nice I appreciated that I think you have something here you should try it and I kind of brushed it off at first Mm -hmm. and um, I was like no I'm I'm not gonna do it but then later on Mm -hmm. It Mm -hmm. came back to me again that I should. Mm -hmm. And so I did some little test runs with it, and it got some buzz. So exactly, is that like just a, is it a concierge service for mothers that just had children or just mothers in general? It's a combination of that service being available to them. Uh, Let's just say they don't have a support system at home for them during Mm -hmm. their recovery period. I can step in to help them there, but primarily it is custom-made gift boxes that has all things pamper-related, beauty-related to basically massage the um, emotional state of the mother as she's transitioning back to herself. And it's just to make her... actually book you to do a custom box if they want to gift that Mm -hmm. service to someone. They can. Awesome. So I'm in the process of getting that to launch Uh this fall, early Mm -hmm. winter. And um, it's a lot of nice things that come with that because I feel like if you take care of the mother Mm -hmm. and you make her feel special, you make her feel beautiful, then you're going to get the best of her Mm -hmm. if you take care of her. And it's a nice way to show your appreciation to her Mm -hmm. um, because she goes through several months of carrying a whole human being. Mm -hmm. She goes through the trauma of bringing a whole child here. So Mm -hmm. she's worn out. Right. But if you pamper her through her recovery process and you make her feel good, you might get the very best of her overall. And so that's what I chose to do. Now, tell me about EWC. Okay. Elders, Elders, women, women and, and children. children. That include that is all inclusive. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So is, Elders Is that a nonprofit? No. It's for profit. N- okay. No, no, it's not it's not for profit. It's just a small private um, okay. company that I just put together for my daughters and I mm-hmm. to do our work in the community. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So I have a sweet spot for elders because mm-hmm. I was raised by my grandparents. Mm-hmm. And I also have a sweet spot for women and children, especially women who are unfortunately in shelters with their kids. And I've always... Um, gone to shelters and brought things to them um, throughout the year just to make sure that, Mm -hmm. you know, they're okay. And um, I thought about how elderly people do not 
often have what they need in terms of somebody being there taking care of them. Mm -hmm. So I would have to say about four years ago, um, it was around the holiday season, it just came to me to get my daughters and we put some little care packets together and Mm -hmm. some little gifts and just go visit the elderly and let them know that somebody's still thinking about them in a special time like this and it started with that and from there it was a nice success for us and I decided to make that um, our family tradition and so it's an act of philanthropy it's something yes. that you basically it's, a, it's something that you're giving mm-hmm. not only with your time but the resources that you you know give back you're paying right. it forward and it's I want to grow bigger mm-hmm. in that platform because my vision Vision is so big right there Mm -hmm. that I want to be able to touch just about every area of Houston that I can touch with elders, women, and And children. children. So I have my work cut out for that, Mm -hmm. but I'm willing to take that on because I like doing that. And I think it's important to um, give your time there because when you think about it, um, our root starts from, from our elders. elders. Cool. So you got to give them that respect. So what was your aha moment in, in, in everything that you're doing from the unique concierge to um, elders with children to, you know, taking care of the mothers to writing your book? What was <laughs> everything? What was it that clicked that said or when was it? Mm-hmm. When it clicked to say, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. Because, you know, we're both gorgeous grandmas. And yeah. I really want <laughs> I really want to debunk the theory mm-hmm. that it's too late or you're too old. And sometimes people think, well, I started late in life. No, you started on yeah. a timetable that God granted for you to have. Absolutely. Because when you think about it, some people, they live to be 80. Mm-hmm. And I'm 40. So that means that if I live to be 80, I still have 40 good years left. Yeah. So what I didn't do at 20, I'm still young enough to do it now at 40. And I don't feel bad that I got it late as long as I got it. Mm-hmm. So I'm asking you, did it come early or did it come late? Or was it a, a whole journey that kind of evolved like a butterfly effect for you when you got that moment to say, I'm finna be the Michelle Lynette. <laughs> I'm finna push my brand. I'm finna do my work in the community. And I'm finna share my, you know, my life through my poetry mm-hmm. again. When, what, what was that? Okay. That moment came very early i would Mm -hmm. have to say at 18 but again in the middle of that journey life Life happened happened. Mm -hmm. so um when it came back to me i would have to say um after the birth of my grandson okay because at that moment i started thinking legacy Legacy. and it's a whole different it is a very different thought and emotion Mm -hmm. when you have a grandchild coming here oh yeah because you think oh this is what i want to do for my kids Mm -hmm. i want to leave this behind for my kids but once you start having grandchildren it's a whole Whole different different. experience Mm -hmm. it's a whole different thought process and i started to try to compare myself to my grandmother and i thought Will I be just as great as she, she was to me? Right. Will I make her proud mm-hmm, by mm-hmm. being the best that I can be? How can I take this journey on? Right. But I had to realize that I'm not her. Mm-hmm. I can apply what I learned, learned from, from her, her, but I'm not her. And whatever is in me to do, I need to do it to the best of my ability and to also know that if I'm going to leave a legacy and I'm going to leave something for somebody to say about me, I better leave something worth talking about. All right. And so that's what started that. So once you had your grandson, because, I mean, that happened to me. Like, I had an epiphany. It was like, I don't know. It is different than a mother love. It I is. I mean, I love my babies, my three sons, but yeah. that grandbaby, baby, baby. <laughs> it listen, is. Listen, I go feed behind that one. I'm just yeah. letting the world know. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah. true. It's a different kind of love. So when you had that epiphany and you decided that you know what it's time for me to start living a legacy because it's Mm -hmm. not how you live really it's how you remembered Mm -hmm. it's your footprints in the sand Mm -hmm. what became your new formula for success how did it change your relationships your friendships your how you how you operated in the world because usually when we have an epiphany we change something 
I knew that I could not continue the things that was holding me back. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had to let some things go. Mm-hmm. And I knew I had to let some people go. Mm-hmm. And when you are going through a transition, mm-hmm. it's not always easy to let go of your comfort zone. I don't think it's ever easy. But you have to let go of your comfort zone in order for you to grow properly. Right. And so with that being said, it was me and God having our personal conversation. And from there, I just said, you know what? I'm a full grown woman mm-hmm. and I'm going to follow my path the way God laid it out mm-hmm. and I'm just going to follow my energy and my thought process mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> there all right now you actually wrote your book I tell did. us about poetic soul <laughs> the unspoken <laughs> roots tell us about that because you you know you were the one that had the poetry but didn't want to get on the mic <laughs> so tell us about it <laughs> well it's a it's funny because there are things that I wrote 12 years ago that is relevant to today. You know that, you know, I will say you mm-hmm. have to be very careful what you write mm-hmm. because in my um, beginning of birthing my poetry mm-hmm. and writing it down, I sometimes wrote poetry that wasn't necessarily my story, but that was relative to my my audience mm-hmm. so that they can feel it. Mm-hmm. But it ended up where I ended up feeling it and it didn't, and so now when I say those same poems that mm-hmm. I wrote 10 years ago, it has so much more fire and passion behind it because it resonates more. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? Did I write that into my reality? <laughs> Something to think about. You know, It is. It is. It is. But sometimes you can be wise beyond your years mm-hmm. and don't even realize the message that's, that's placed inside of you to speak for another time right and I think that's what happened with me because Mm -hmm. I do have some things that are still relevant Mm -hmm. to our time and so it's almost like the life cycle repeating itself again yes um so whoever didn't catch it back then they can catch it now now. baby (laughs) they can catch it now New cover on that <laughs> right, thing. You right. catch this work. <laughs> yeah. If it sold out back then, it'll sell out again. And, amen. Hey, listen. Hey, I'm not going to let no stone go forth that the Lord bless me with. You hear me? He gave me that blessing for a reason. That's he true. did the same thing for you, too. So, I'm going to ask you now that you decided to do these things. I know you speak about, you know, your children and everything. Mm-hmm. Outside of your immediate family, do you have a support team out you know that's helping you or you kind of like I do oh that's awesome I do um I definitely have a strong uh support system on the east coast okay and I have a nice support system on the west coast okay and even though I'm somewhat quiet I I am a candid person too Mm -hmm. but um I know people Okay. <laughs> I know people. <laughs> now, how is it balancing um, motherhood and business? Or should I say grandmotherhood? You know, we grandmas. Girl, I'm proud of my grandbaby. I've been letting them know. I honey. know. I know. I, I call him the grandson. Yes. That's, that's the grandson. The grandson. The grandson. So how is it balancing all that with everything that you're manifesting in this season? I just make it work. Yeah. I've had to put a schedule in place for myself. Mm-hmm. Um. Because now that we're operating in the pandemic Mm -hmm. and my daughter is returning to school online, Mm -hmm. now I have to create a schedule around her schedule, and that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. But I'm making it work. You know, we always figure it out. We We figure it out. But I have a schedule in place. Sometimes I don't sleep much because I'm working you know, at late hours, mm-hmm. whereas, you know, during the day I could be in between work and mothering. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, but I have a nice balance. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so if there's someone out there that's listening, that's tuning in mm-hmm. to us right now, mm-hmm. and they're feeling defeated, mm-hmm. you know, because we all get to that point where we feel like, oh, we do, oh, like, I should have, could have, would have, mm-hmm. I don't know, but they're feeling defeated. And they want to step out in their gift and follow mm-hmm. their calling. What advice could you give them? Listen to your inner self. Mm-hmm. Because we are all given that inner voice mm-hmm. that 
speak to us and try to tell us to go. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand God's voice and you have to know when to listen to yourself, when to tap in and when to trust yourself, when to trust God. Because if your spirit is tugging at you, something's tugging at your spirit for you to get out and do something, get out and do it. It's a reason why you're being tugged. And, you know, don't doubt yourself Mm -hmm. because self-doubting can Mm -hmm. cause you to miss a lot of opportunities. And I would also say don't worry about what other people are going to say because people are going to express themselves anyway. Right. Everybody's not going to like you. Yeah, everybody definitely has an opinion. Everybody's not going to like you, but who's for you is going to be for For you. you. And that's it. That's right. That's it. So once again, I actually want to circle back to your book, um, Unspoken. Poetic Soul. Unspoken Roots. Unspoken Roots. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I want our viewers to be able to get it, make sure they get a shot of that. Okay. (laughs) And if they want to purchase your book, um, can they find that on your website under the the Michelle? Uh, Yes, absolutely. So I brought the book with me. Here it is. It's a very nice book. It has some great pages in there and so it's a lot of fun stuff in here all right but you have to purchase it to see what i put in there and you can find it on my website at www.thethemichellelanette.com and um i have merchandise on there as well um to make sure that you're looking good while you are reading all right. And also, if they want to follow you on Instagram, your Instagram handle is? Uh, the, the Michelle, Michelle Lynette, Lynette at yeah. Instagram and Facebook, The Michelle Lynette. And this coming Friday, September 4th, I will be on um, live. Mm-hmm. And after that, I have another show coming up. Are um, you going to be on Instagram Live? Or? I am. Okay. I'm, I'm going to be on Facebook and Instagram Live. Okay. And your Facebook is The Michelle Lynette. Yes. Okay. The Michelle Lynette. They can go there. They can either go there or to your Instagram page. Yes. And also, if you want to sign up for um, information about what I have going on, go to my website again, www.themichellelanette.com, and you can sign up there so that you can stay in the loop about things that I have coming up and you can check those things out on my events page as well which is also on my website and then your concierge service you do have a Facebook page for that as well I do so if they want to go and find out more about your concierge service they can go there like and follow and see what your updates are from time to time there correct correct all right well (laughs) we're going to get ready to close out the show I want to thank all of our guests for tuning Mm -hmm. in be sure to catch us on all Mm -hmm. social media of platforms you can find us on youtube google play google podcast iHeartRadio, itunes hip-hop street soundcloud spotify spreaker and stitcher i want to thank you again michelle and for thank coming you for and sharing me. your I journey your it. story i am thank so you. inspired by you <laughs> i'm glad that you followed my advice <laughs> back way back 12 years ago and followed your calling because you definitely have a calling thank and you and so you just keep on spreading that brown girl magic you are not too <laughs> old to spread it girl because we have no. a whole legacy no, not to leave at all. behind not at all all right thank you guys for tuning in you are now outside the box <laughs>